Can you get a free house using creative real estate strategies? Absolutely. You can absolutely get a free house. I myself got a free house. That was my first ever house. It was completely free. As a matter of fact, I got paid money up front. That's how I got started in the real estate business. And now I'm over here $200 million in sales later talking to you guys, right? So what we're going to talk about today is a little something I like to call house hacking. It can help you become a millionaire. It is how I got started in real estate. And it is how you can get started the same way. You don't need a lot of money. You don't need amazing credit. You just need a little bit of hustle and some responsibility. Let's do it. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the MLS Search and Analysis Show. I am James Wise. For a lot of people that watch this show, y'all know what I do, right? For the new people out there. We talk about real estate investing, strategies, tips, tricks. We try to give you the real life experiences of a real estate investor because that's what I do, right? I've been in this game a very long time. I've sold over $200 million worth of investment real estate. We run the largest portfolio of its kind in the Cleveland market. And today I'm working with a Cleveland investor to help him get started in house hacking, which is actually how I got started with that man right there, right? My brother, Steve. Uh, helped me house hack my very first house, right? Eli, you are a Cleveland cat, right? Cleveland guy. And what you got going on, brother, is you do not have a ton of money. And that's okay. You don't need a ton of money. When I did my first deal, I didn't have a ton of money, okay? You don't need a ton of money, Eli, with a little bit of responsibility and a little bit of hustle, you can absolutely house hack yourself into a great deal and start your career, right? So I'm glad you sent this property to me, brother. This is one you were very uh, interested in. And I know previously you and I had talked about issues with you getting a long-term loan. And I know you don't have that much cash, right? You got like 20 Gs. But with this particular deal, so long as you can get the loan, you've been talking to a bunch of lenders, so long as you can get the loan, brother, you're not going to need anywhere near $20,000. You only going to need like three thousand dollars to do this deal right this could be a very big step for you brother i know you and i have also been looking at some wholesale deals too uh you got to you know throw a lot throw a lot out there to get a wholesale deal to stick this one uh if you can come up with the way to get that loan brother you have more than enough money to do this and i will show you how to get a free house as well as explain to you how i got started with my free house right after this <laughs> Two, please. Welcome back, folks. This this is going to be the meat, the meat and potatoes. As you all can tell, your boy Jay Weiss enjoys meat and potatoes a little too much. God damn, my wife's a good cook. All right. Now, this right here, this is a house that I'm going to have you live in for free, folks. I'm going to have you live in this bad boy completely free. Free house, right? It's a little strategy I like to call house hacking, okay? House hacking. It's how I got started in real estate investing, right? Way back in the day, folks, when uh, Barack Obama, Barack Obama, he was the president, okay? He was the president of the United States, and we were in the midst of a recession, right? So with my house hack, uh, I actually got paid. I got paid for mine. Uh, we're not in that specific situation anymore, so you're not going to get paid up front for your free house, but you are absolutely going to get a free house. So 
What you want to do to get a free house is you want to buy it using the lowest down payment loan humanly possible. Now, I know some lenders are saying they're going to do some type of 0% down loans. Uh, I know you can get conventional loans at 5% pretty easily. I've seen people do 1% loans, but I'm going to use 3.5% because that's the most common low down payment loan I see out there. But if you talk to your lenders, you could probably find some folks that are going to do like 1% or 5%. Truth be told, I don't work uh, with that type of financing product all too often in my business, right? Because my business is solely uh, working with real estate investors who s typically are just buying traditional investment properties, right? So in, in the game I'm in, we're usually putting down 25%. But back in the day, right, when I was getting started, I utilized this strategy myself. I utilized a 3.5% down loan, okay? So that's what I'm definitely very comfortable with. And I know that product is out there in the marketplace quite often. But again, Loans, lending situations are changing quite often. I, I think you guys could probably find yourself some 1% down loans, maybe even a no money down loan, okay? Now, when I did mine, I was supposed to come up with 3.5% down. But as I said, Barack Obama was the president. We were in the middle of the housing. Uh, Steve, help me. The housing crisis. The housing crisis, right? We were in the middle of the housing crisis. So uh, Barack Obama was given anybody that bought a home like 8500 okay? My house was only 85000 right? Because it was the middle of the housing crisis. That house today, I still own it. I got tenants in there. Uh, that house is probably worth 140000 150000 right? But they gave me 10% of the value of the house back then. So uh, I only had to come up. Uh, it was 85000 So what is that? Um, it was 85500 actually. 85500 times 3.5%. I needed to come up with about three thousand dollars, but because of Obama, I, I got eight eight thousand five hundred from the federal government. Now, uh, back then, I wasn't savvy enough to get my closing costs paid for by the seller at that time, so <clears throat> I had some closing costs as well. But in addition, in addition to that eighty five hundred, I actually did get another eight thousand from the city, right? Because there was actually a a city uh, grant that was available as well, another eight thousand, another ten percent. So I got a total of sixteen thousand dollars paid to me uh, to buy a house that only needed like three thousand down plus closing costs. So it was a really sweet deal. Okay, now. Don't get too excited. Don't get too focused on that, folks, uh, because that was back in the day during the, the worst housing crisis of the world, right? Government, everybody was doing anything they could to get people to buy homes, right? Coming out of the foreclosure crisis. And what I did with that home, I bought it. I lived there. I rented out uh, the entire basement to my brother, as you see, doing the filming right now, right? He was my very first tenant. We built uh, his basement apartment over many, many four locos. And folks, for now, see you in the know. Remember that, Steve? That was the real Four Loco, not the new Four Loco, right? That that was the Four Loco that's, like, outlawed. So I think your bathroom was, like, how was your, wasn't your bathroom wall, like, totally crooked the whole time? <laughs> oh, yeah, it was a little crooked. Yeah, that's what happens when you build a bathroom with a four, some, some original Four Locos in you. But that that's not the point. The point is house hacking can really be your springboard to success. At that time... Uh, I was 21 years old. Steve was like 18. I was maybe 22. He was 18, somewhere in there. Uh, we're four years apart, right? Just turned 22. Yeah, 18, 17 turning 18, 21 turning 22, somewhere right in there, right? He was just out of high school, okay? And he became my first tenant. I did that house hack, right? And then I lived there for several years and then eventually moved on, of course, right? And we got tenants in there. Holton Wise is managing it to this day. Again, it's worth like 140 Gs. I think my tenants are paying like 1150 $1,200 in rent. I've had the same tenants in there for the last like four years, right? So I don't even have to think about it, right? That is like an awesome, perfect success story. And I'm going to help you do the same, okay? I'm going to help you do the same. It can be done. And you can do it with this particular property, okay? 2186 East 89th, Cleveland, 44106. It's on the market for $119,000 been on the market for 43 days the seller rehabbed this triplex okay they rehabbed this triplex and they went overboard they they tried to sell it for like way more they've been dropping their price down but it is a very nice property okay it's quite nice fully renovated it's turnkey but you see that right there it's very important for you to pay attention this house hacking strategy that I'm going to show you, you're getting a free house you're living for free as a matter of fact you're actually getting paid to live there you're going to do it with almost no money down 
But with everything, there's pros, there's cons. This is the real world. I'm not just teaching you all strategy. You could actually buy this house, okay, with exactly how I'm going to lay it out for you, and I could help you buy it. I'll be your broker. But I want you to understand what I'm talking about, right? There's bars on them three windows, okay? You see that? There's bars on those windows, right? I think there's a couple of pictures. You can see it even more clear, right? There's bars on these windows because this property is in a pretty sketchy area of Cleveland, right? This is a pretty ghetto area, okay? You need to understand that. Now, when I talk to investors who are just pure investors, pure cash flow investors, and they're investing out of state, I often will have them not invest in neighborhoods such as this. I graded all the neighborhoods on an A to F scale in Cleveland. A being where the rich folks live. F being where the poor folks live. F grade properties, they're cheaper, they're higher risk, there's more crime. A grade, the opposite. Okay? Right? It's just, it is what it is. That's what this is. This is an F grade neighborhood, right? Because of that, we can score an amazing deal. Uh, but you have to understand that's what you're getting yourself into. Uh, we could utilize this strategy on higher quality properties, but of course the amount of money you're going to need is going to go up, right? So I wanted to start with the cheapest possible scenario here. Now, they're asking 119 grand for this. I still think that is too high. I want to see you pick it up at 90,000, but do not get yourself caught up on that $90,000 because you're not really going to need any money. Because remember, we're getting the majority of it from a lender, right? You only need 3.5% down, possibly 1%. I'm going to do the chart off of 3.5%, okay? What will you get? Well, with this triplex, okay, you're going to get three units. Two of the units you rent at seven fifty dollars a piece to Section 8 tenants, and then you're going to live in the third one, the smallest unit, right? We're going to do that so you make some money. Fifteen hundo a month is what comes in, 18000 for the year. I started to get into this, and I, I think I side sidetracked myself a little bit. I often tell out-of-state investors to avoid neighborhoods that are this rough, this ghetto, this tough. The reason I do that is because, number one, it's tough, right? It's hard. It's hard fucking work to manage houses in the ghetto. If there are some fucking liberal fucking assholes out there that want to be like, Dads, how could you say that? That's offensive. They probably don't own fucking rental property, bro. I live in the real fucking world. I don't fucking ride unicorns, okay? The ghetto's tough. You want to talk to some uh, real-life, tried-and-true, tough landlords who've been in this game for a very long time, they'll tell you the same fucking thing. Anybody that's telling you that the ghetto ain't tough, <laughs> they're off in fairy tale land, right? The ghetto's tough. And because the ghetto's so tough, uh, property management companies like myself, we avoid working in incredibly tough ghetto neighborhoods on a management side, right? I mean, I could sell and broker transactions over there. I do it all the time. But management, we don't really like to do it uh, because Everybody who's buying the properties in the roughest neighborhood, they're aiming towards the cheapest possible properties, right? So what does that tell you? Well, the client's a fucking cheap ass, right? Uh, and the work's harder for us, right? So we ain't trying to do harder work for less money. That's one issue. Two, uh, they're just so tough in the ghetto. It's very hard to staff our company, right? As you are aware, right? You got to pay attention to what's out there in the world, right? When I did my house hack, what was happening? We were coming out of the worst housing recession, and right, I took advantage of some government programs that were being offered. Okay, what's happening in the world right now? A labor shortage, right? So labor's tough, okay? So right now, right, like, I'd be crazy to send my guys into neighborhoods they don't want to work because I can't risk losing my guys. I, it's tough to staff a property management and construction company, folks. Uh, so if I'm sending them to really tough neighborhoods they don't feel comfortable being in because they're fucking dangerous, uh, they're going to quit, right? And it's very hard to get labor these days, right? And that's how a lot of the big, big property management companies are going to feel, right? Holton Wise, pretty much the biggest in the city. We got a couple competitors out there uh, that are rivaling us in size. And then there's a bunch of little randoms, right? Just kind of picking off the top, picking up on our scraps, right? Maybe they'll take on this kind of stuff. But if you can't get the biggest, most sophisticated companies to work there, you're only able to get people... Uh, that can't get a decent market share because, A, maybe they're not as good, or, B, they're they're new and they're not proven, they're not tried and true, they don't have their systems in place, or maybe they're just like running an illegal property management company. you got to think of all these things, right? Why would you take harder business for less money than everybody else, right? Because you can't get you know, a normal share of market business with your products, so you're obviously not that good, right? So you got to think of that, right? So because of those reasons, I tell a lot of state investors, dude, 
let's just go with something a little less risk free. I think it'd be too tough for you to pay me uh, for me to make money to make it worth my while and get you money and deal with the difficulty of the neighborhoods. All of that, of course, is completely different when you're actually going to live there, right? It does become easier to manage the asset because you can sit there every single day and watch your asset like a motherfucking hawk, right? As a property management company, you as a uh, out-of-state investor, you can't pay me to have a guy sitting in the driveway every day, right? You'd have to pay me X amount of dollars per hour for every hour he sits there, right? That would be more than your rent. Doesn't make sense obviously, right? But if you live there, you can essentially do that, right? So you can really uh, keep things in line and keep on them like a, a laser-focused talk, right? I talked about tried and too, true rough, tough landlords. Man, there's a lot of savage rough, tough landlords that I know that are local that have been doing this their whole career, and they gobble up money in the ghetto, right? They make a lot of money in the ghetto. Me personally, I like uh, lower-income stuff, but I do like the D and C grade neighborhoods. I feel uh, those are the best of the best, but there are guys that are making a killing in F-class neighborhoods like this. But I believe it really only works as a local, right? So that's why I always talk out, talk out-of-state investors out of that stuff, right? It's just really hard unless you're able to do it yourself. So if you're house hacking, you could absolutely do it yourself. And if you put those tenants on Section 8, you're going to alleviate the major issue with ghetto neighborhoods, which is not collecting the rent, right? If the government pays the rent, you don't got to worry about it, right? So with all that told, you're living in the smallest unit. You're bringing in 1500 from the other two units, okay? Of that 1500 I believe you're going to spend approximately $999 operating your property. Repairs, maintenance, your taxes, you got to pay insurance, you got to pay water sewer for everybody. I think your water sewer estimates are going to be a little lower than what a normal investor uh, would um, be paying, right? Because you're there all the time. If you see people turning on the outside spigots or doing this or doing that or running this or that, you know, you could nip it in the butt right then and there, where if you're not physically on site, you don't find out about that kind of stuff till later, right? So uh, if you guys watch some of my other shows, you'll see uh, for a triplex, I would normally estimate the water sewer usage to be a little higher. Uh, here we could estimate it to be a little lower. Also, because you are going to live there, I would assume you're going to use less water than your tenant because you're paying the motherfucking bill, right? So all told, I believe you'll make about $12,000 a year, right? 11995 Now, this is where it gets really juicy, right? Free houses, right? Free houses! $90,000, but all you need to do is put down 3.5%, folks. That's only $3,150, right? Who can't come up with $3,000? Very easy to come up with $3,000, and you don't need to have an amazing credit to get a mortgage. You got to have reasonable credit, right? I think they're doing these owner-occupant loans like with credit scores 550 and up, right? Uh, don't quote me on that. Again, it's not my normal cup of tea, uh, but I think it's 550 and up. Could be 600 and up for the FHA, right? So you only put down 3,150, right? Only put down 3,150. Your mortgage will be 366 a month. So after you pay off that mortgage, you are clearing 634 a month or 7,600. So now you don't have to pay your mortgage, right? You don't pay a mortgage to somebody else. You're not paying for the roof over your head. You're living completely free, and you're making an additional $7,600, right? You will pay back your $3,100 $3, or whatever it was investment in as little as six months. Then you're just completely in the clear, right? A 241.5% cash on cash return. That's why so many people utilize the house hacking strategy. Best of all, after 12 months, guess what you can do? You can move out and do this again on the next property. You could easily stack 10 of these deals, about three grand per deal, right? You're making shit. You do your 3100 up front, live there for a year, and the following six months, right? The first six months, you pay off your original investment. The next six months, you made enough money to fund the next one, right? You could essentially string these along for 10 years and become a millionaire in real estate, folks. That's what you could do. Free houses. This is the strategy I got started with. Obviously, if you've been around Cleveland, you see my trucks, you see my signs, you know what's going on. The strategy works. The question is, is it going to work for you? Do you want it to work for you on this property? Or are you looking to maybe pay a little bit more for a property uh, to be in a nicer neighborhood? Do you want to take on the risks and the hard work that is needed 
to make something like this work for you. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.